Well, hello everyone. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Super mini mail call. And I know people laugh because I say things are going to be mini and they hardly ever are mini uh, when I do these mail calls, but that's how it goes. I normally try to open packages from one person. And actually what we have here on the bench are, looks like five things. They are all from the same person. And there's actually two more packages also from the same person. This all comes from Seth. Now he has actually drop shipped this to me, so to speak. So he has ordered this stuff from various places in it. And so they've come to me, but he ordered them with a very unique uh, to address on here. I mean, it's the PO box, but I can tell them apart. So I know that these are all the same item coming from Seth. So I'm just gonna quickly open this stuff up and we can check out what it is. Now, the theme of these packages are going to be Tandy or TRS-80 Radio Shack related. And I think it kind of all goes with the, the idea that I've been working on the TRS-80 Model 2, at least at this point when I'm opening this. I'm a bit backlogged on super mini mail call episodes. So by the time this airs, it's quite possible that, um, you know, some time has passed, but just know that this stuff is all Tandy related as are the other two boxes, which are really big. So I can't put them on the bench right now. So I'm just gonna move this stuff off and we'll look at one thing at a time. All right, so the first little package here, which I'm um, actually opened already, I accidentally opened it and I realized uh, it was a mail call item. Let's see what this is. So this appears to be some kind of backplane. And I actually really have no idea what this is for. So this connector would plug into something. And then we have four more expansion connectors. On the back we have a power connection. There's some markings here, DWG number 1700246REV B. And on this side of the board, it says Tandy Corporation, copyright 1983. And there's a date code there of 1984. And underneath this cap here, made in USA. So, right, okay, I'm not too sure what this is. So if anyone recognizes this and can let me know what Tandy machine this is for, please let me know. All right, moving on to the next thing. It says Music Max on the back. Like this is a vinyl record or something. But looking at the from address on this package, it comes from the state of Victoria in Australia. All right, so let's see what we have in here. Okay, whoa, I recognize what this is. This, and there's actually two of them. These are extender boards for the Tandy TRS-80 Model 12, 16B, or 6000. And I think this one here is for the Model 2. And what this lets me do is I plug this into the back plane and then I can take a card that's in the back plane I normally can't get to, connect it up here and then work on it. This is gonna be super valuable because I'm gonna need to do some troubleshooting on the Model 2. And without this, it's nearly impossible because like I said, everything is stuck inside that back chassis. Now, I guess the Model 12, 16B and 6000 has a slightly different chassis arrangement or something. I mean, the connector looks the same, but obviously this sticks the card out the back um, as opposed to out the top. And the reason why the top is important for the Model 2 is because when the Model 2 is assembled, the back case kind of comes up about here. So you can't have a card sticking out the back. You have to have the card sticking out the top. Now, back in the day when Radio Shack was servicing these machines and repairing them, they must have had Radio Shack version of them. Oh, here we go. Look at that. The Nav Super Extender for the Model 2 or 16. Obviously, these are 2018. And that means that these are modern recreations of that. So that is really fantastic. How exciting. This is absolutely going to be invaluable for me. I just looked at the box again at the sender name and these come from Ian Maverick. And I mean, he's the, the Tandy guy in the world. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, if you've ever seen it. He wears a tie and talks about everything that has to do with TRS-80s, like the world authority on them. So he obviously made these boards for troubleshooting and fixing these machines. So Seth, thank you very much for sending those in. That is awesome. Okay, next up, here we go. Let's see what this is. All right, let's see what this is. It looks like a power supply of some type. 
Now, Seth gave me a heads up to some of the stuff that he's sending, but I don't actually know what all of it is, which is why, like, I don't know what this car is used for here. All right, we have kind of a rusty old power supply. What is this for? We have IEC mains input, power switch, bunch of rust and stuff on here. Oh, wait, there we go. It says, caution, turn computer off and wait 10 seconds before inserting or removing any option board. Even though there's rust on the outside of the case, inside it actually looks in pretty good shape. I see down there, it's not gonna be possible to see on the camera. It says TAM radio, T-A-M-R-A-D-I-O. This will be the DC output for this power supply. We got minus 12, bunch of grounds, plus five, three different connections there, plus 12, plus 12. Uh, plus five and no connections. So yeah, pretty pretty standard stuff for a PC or whatever of the early 80s variety. And this one connection here, it does say on the PCB, fan out. And uh, judging by the colors of these wires, this computer would be using a 120 volt fan, so mains power. So I wonder if this is for something like a TRS-80 Model 12 or one of the later Model 2 type machines that maybe went to a, a more integrated power supply. All right, next up, this one actually comes from Hemet, California. But like I said, I know this came from Seth. He actually ordered this. Okay, uh, this is amazing. Now this is not Tandy related. Well, it is sort of Tandy related because that's the first time I really talked about it. <laughs> what Seth went and did is he ordered me an entire set of wire wrapping tools and the wire for the wire wrapping. All right, I repositioned the camera. Now check this out. How cool. I know so little about wire wrapping. So look at these little holders here. So this holds the actual thin solid core wire. Now I use this kind of wire when I'm doing bodges. I have a little spool of it. Let me grab that. Here it is right here. So I'm pretty sure this is wire wrap wire here because it's thin and solid conductor and I love it. It's perfect for doing bodges. But if you're actually gonna do real wire wrapping, use these little tools here. And I guess I just don't really know how this works. I'm gonna have to go read up about it. But I think you like thread this through here and then you put this onto the pin and you twist it. And that twists this wire in a really solid fashion onto the pin. Now I know there were power tools to help you do wire wrapping, like a little hand tool that would have a motor in it. Yeah, from my understanding, all of these at least are the same, uh, like they all do the same thing. So here it is, wire wrapping hand tool. Oh, it has some instructions on here, look at this. So it looks like you strip the wire, you slide that in, you loop it around the little notch, you stick the terminal in, and then you twist it and you get this nice perfect connection on there. And it looks like the tool actually has a wire stripper built right in. And then you can also use this tool to unwrap. And the funny thing is I used to have one of these in my toolbox and I never really knew what it was for. And I think I threw it away at some point. Sometimes doing wire wrapping is just an ideal way to make a connection quickly and easily without having to solder a bunch of wires because you can just unwrap it uh, when you wanna make an alteration. These little holders are pretty cool as well. Looks like uh, this has a built-in stripper that's on here. This spool here is pretty full. That one's mostly empty. Uh, has a good amount of red on there as well. A little bit of yellow there. Quite a bit of the white wire, that's pretty cool. Another one with red, it's pretty full. Some blue, not a whole ton. That one's got a lot more on it. And we have a good amount more. Okay, this one is empty. That one's pretty full. It's probably more than I would ever need. I mean, because in the old days, you did entire circuit board design using wire wrap. So you'd probably go through an absolute ton of this. Of course, these days we can just order PCBs, but it's still handy. Now, someone a while back gave me this board and I had this hanging in my TV theater room downstairs. I have no idea what this is from. If anyone recognizes this, let me know. EA83SN7, and we have ICs here from various years. That says 78, 1980, 78, 79. Who knows what this is? 
But the reason why I keep this is not so much for this side, it's for this side. <laughs> that is wire wrap right there. That is what it looks like. When you need to make interconnections, you just run the wire where you need it and you, you use the tool to wrap the wire on there. Hopefully the camera is focused there, but the wire is wrapped around that square pin very tightly. And I guess theoretically is I could actually use this tool here to unwrap one of these. I think it's this end for unwrapping. Just like that, it unwrapped that wire super easily. That is so freaking cool. Okay, I'm gonna try to wrap a piece of wire on here. I think I've done this properly. That is really cool. <laughs> I just wrapped this wire on there. I know I'm kind of sounding giddy here for something that is not that big a deal, but I just think that's pretty awesome. And I think you can wire wrap onto any type of square pin like this. So I'm just going to strip some more of the wire. Feed it into the tool, feed it onto the pin, hold the wire and twist. And there's a close up of that wrapped connection there on that one pin. So this thing is now, it's attached. It's attached to this old board. Obviously there's a bit of an art to this and you probably get really good, really fast. And you can make those interconnections very easily. That, that's really cool. Awesome, thank you, Seth. All right, we have another package here. Let's see what's in here. Check that out. A little TRS-80 color graphic printer. Has a Centronix connection on the back. The TRS-80 color graphic printer CGP-115 and a serial number 2896. Fascinating. Product of Japan. Dip switch setting, serial parallel. Serial, oh, I see, there's a DIN connector there. So this almost seems like it's designed to work with the Coco line of computers. So let's see what else is in the box here. Uh, we have a Centronix parallel cable. And once I dumped out the peanuts, that seemed to be it. Just these two things here. So this probably is a thermal printer, maybe? Wait a second, pen change switch. Is this a plotter? This must be a plotter. When the printer is not used for extended time, always remove the pen and replace the caps. Please be sure there are four pens installed when using the printer. Oh, this little print head here has four little tiny pens and it looks like it can rotate to select which one is gonna print. What a cute little thing. There's some instructions here on pen replacement. Obviously, so this is not thermal, it's just regular paper. I wonder what kind of paper uh, this uses. Looking inside here, I'm just checking to make sure there's no pens or anything. There are no pens in there. I have to say that plotters always were fascinating to me because on old 8-bit computers, if you had dot matrix printers, you always had very pixelated graphics. Of course, plotters work uh, with pens, they're like vector-based. So you get printouts or graphics that are really sharp and supposedly, you know, high resolution, at least because you have lines that aren't pixelated. So when as a, as a kid, I was always really fascinated by that. I've never owned a plotter myself, so I know very little about it. And um, again, I don't know if like the pens this uses are commonly available or, or what a good mod is for them. I've seen videos by Curious Mark where he's had some HP plotters where he takes some markers and like takes them apart and uses part of the felt tip part and is able to make working pens with that. But again, um, I know very little about this. So if anyone is familiar with the Radio Shack TRS-80 color graphic printer CGP-115, obviously there would have originally been a roller that went into these slots here that held the paper and a cover that went on here, which, um, was not included with this. So without that, it's a little harder to get this working. Yeah, the cover would have gone here, clear plastic. And yeah, a roller would go in that paper spool to help it feed properly. Right, so uh, pretty cool. All right, last but not least, here's a really big package. Ooh, and it's got a whole lot of foam peanuts in it, my favorite. Looks like we have some individually wrapped items. So let me unbox this. 
So we have a real peanut overload here. I've transferred some from here into there. It's always hard when you have peanuts like this because you're you're just not sure if you've left something behind in the bottom of the box. You know, I don't want to throw something away inadvertently that I didn't realize was in there, but I'm pretty sure that there's nothing left in this big box. All right, so let's see uh, what we got here. Ooh, this seems like some kind of Tandy laptop. Interesting, a uh, three and a half inch floppy drive on the side. It's the Tandy 3800 HD, model number 25-3533 notebook computer, DCN 16 volts. Let's see about this thing. Ooh, there it is. Look at that thing, kind of cute. Now, unfortunately the screen is, um, not looking so hot. It doesn't appear to be broken, but I can't imagine that that's gonna result in any kind of usable picture. Very compact little design. Keyboard feels pretty nice to type on. So flipping down the cover here, we have a serial parallel. What's here? There's a hole here. I wonder if that's for like a modem or something. Three and a half inch floppy on that side. And this side we have a DC input. And there is brightness, high and low toggle switch. And there's a contrast control right here. There is no video output on this, which is a bit surprising. Looks like this is the battery. I don't know where that goes. Yep, there it is, 3800 HD. Okay, so the battery compartment's on the top here. I assume this has one in it, there we go. Rechargeable battery pack, NC14C, and I feel the good old feeling of a leaky NICAD. Oh yes, look at that. Look at those contacts there. That's it, leaky NICADs. That's really unfortunate. Can be very destructive to computers and this one has also leaked relatively badly. Same part number, NC14C. So it's also full of NICADs inside. They'll be um, probably double A size type batteries. Hopefully that corrosion did not leak down too much into the machine, but definitely those batteries aren't gonna be working anymore. This must be the power supply. And it is. All right, so let's uh, plug this in and give it a test. Let's see if we get voltage on the power supply. Output is 16 volts DC. Probably goes down when it's loaded. Oh, I'm just noticing now when I plug in the power supply, there's a flashing LED here. Oh. Look at that, it turned on. It is making some very strange noises. All right, 8386, got a Phoenix BIOS 1990, 640K, one meg of extended memory, invalid configuration, of course. The screen is um, very, very hard to read. I don't know what happened in the middle here. I'm assuming something was pushing on the screen. I think that hard drive in here has seen better days as well. The whole machine is making very strange noises. Let's see if I can turn the brightness up or down. Wow, it's like screechy, screamy noises. Just not happy. Let me pop a boot disc in here. Nope, the floppy drive doesn't work either. Although it might need a 720K disc. Let me just try that real quick. No, unfortunately it's not booting. Let me see if I can get into the BIOS settings. Delete, F1. Please run the setup program. When it offers no way to do that, so I assume there's a disk you have to you have to run to get to that. F1 deletes. F2 just says F1 to retry boot. Well, I gotta say this machine is a survivor <laughs> with a screen like this. Very very hard to use or do anything with. But why on earth did Tandy not add a video port on this? Is anyone's guess. Because that's pretty junky on their part. All right, I think with that, I'm going to end this super mini mail call video. There's one more package that Seth sent, uh, but it's really, really big, and it has to do with the TRS-80 Model 2. And right now, as it sits, I've had to set the Model 2 aside. Um, I'm going to work on it in the future. Uh, I just had a little bit of a procedure on my shoulder, and I can't lift heavy things. Well, the box that was sent is really heavy, as of course is the Model 2. So that's gonna have to wait until I heal a little bit. 
So on that bombshell, I have to say, Seth, thank you very much for sending in all this stuff. Uh, this wire wrap stuff is really cool. I'm excited about that. And um, I'll be curious to know if anyone recognizes this power supply and maybe can let me know how this printer can work here. And then of course, what this backplane adapter here is for, because that's kind of fascinating. And I already know what those are. And I guess this Tandy uh, 3800HD, if anyone knows that this machine has replacement parts available for it or a way to make it work again, like as in the screen and um, well, the batteries, uh, those are never gonna work. And then I will add, thank you very much to my patrons. Their names are scrolling up the side of the screen. If you wanna become a patron, you can do so at the link in the description below. Subscribe if you haven't already, uh, thumbs up if you haven't already, or you know, all the usual YouTube stuff. I've said it so many times, everyone's probably sick of hearing it. So that is gonna be that. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.